I made a video recently in which I used the term dynamic range. I said the dynamic range of a digital audio system was the range between 0 dBFS, which is the highest level in a 16 or 24-bit WAV file, and the noise floor. In a 16-bit digital audio system, the dynamic range is roughly 6 decibels per bit, so the dynamic range is 96 decibels. But a commenter disagreed. He said that because you can hear audio below the level of the noise, then the dynamic range is greater than that. OK, we need to look into this. First, let my technical assistant define dynamic range. Audio engineers use dynamic range to describe the ratio of the amplitude of the loudest possible undistorted signal to the noise floor, say of a microphone or loudspeaker. Dynamic range is therefore the signal-to-noise ratio for the case where the signal is the loudest possible for the system. Well, that's pretty clear. I was right. Betty's quoting from Wikipedia, by the way, the source of all knowledge that is righteous and true. But... However, the usable dynamic range may be greater, as a properly dithered recording device can record signals well below the noise floor. So my commenter is right, too. Is this win-win or lose-lose? <laughs> I don't know, but let's move on graciously. We need a demonstration. A demonstration in 16 bits. Hang on. Why am I banging on about 16 bits when everyone uses 24 these days? Well, 16-bit is the compact disc standard. And if an independent artist, for instance, uses CD Baby as their distributor to get their music on Spotify and elsewhere, CD Baby wants a 16-bit, 44.1 kHz audio file. Oh yes, they will take a 24-bit file, then they'll just trash the eight lowest level bits. Let Betty tell you what CD Baby has to say about this. While our master upload application will allow you to upload a 24-bit file, 24-bit files are converted down to 16-bit when we make a DDP for manufacturing. While there is technically less resolution at 16-bit compared to 24-bit, if the files are dithered properly down to 16-bit, they should sound fine. There should never be any distortion introduced as part of that process. CD Baby is, of course, just one distributor, but it shows that the 16-bit format hasn't gone away yet. What I'm going to do here is an interesting test. I'm going to take a sine wave and lower its level considerably. Now, I have a warning. For this video to make sense, I'm going to have to play my sine waves at their original levels. I've chosen 220 hertz because it isn't too painful, but you're going to have to keep your fingers on your volume control. Please consider yourself warned. And I'll give you a further visual warning before each loud tone. I don't want to complicate things by doing this in stereo, pan law and all that, so I'll pan the sine wave all the way to the left, so it's a single channel of mono. I'll pan it back centre in the video. Here it is. Now I'll take it down in level by 90 decibels using the fader. I don't know about you, but I can't hear a thing. By the way, I'll be sending YouTube the original Wave audio in my video soundtrack, so it's 100% clean when it leaves me. Since my door and your door can handle very low levels perfectly well, I'll bounce this to a Wave file, which can't. Then I'll re-import it. Here it is now. Let's listen. <laughs> Can't hear a thing, just as expected. But there should be something there way on down. I'll normalise the signal back up to 0 dBFS. Phew, <laughs> that's gnarly, both audibly and visually. But it's kind of what we expect, don't we? We can do better. I'm going to do the same test again but I'm going to insert a dither plugin into the master track. I'll use the standard dither plugin that comes with Pro Tools on its simplest setting. What is dither? Here's my technical assistant again to explain. If a signal is quantized without using dither, there will be quantization distortion related to the original input signal. In order to prevent this, the signal is dithered. 
a process that mathematically removes the harmonics or other highly undesirable distortions entirely, and that replaces it with a constant fixed noise level. I'll go through the bounce and re-import process again, followed by normalization to 0 dBFS. Here it is. Now, this is interesting. Yes, there's a lot of noise. That's the dither. But the sine wave tone is much cleaner than before. This is the power of dither. It adds a little noise, but it eliminates the distortion. But I was talking about dynamic range, 96 decibels. With dither, it can be more than that. So, here's a similar test, but this time I'm going to lower the level of the sine wave by 110 decibels. I'll leave the fader where it is at minus 90 and use a trim plugin to lower the level another 20 dB. Surely this is way beyond the capability of 16 bits. So I bounce it through dither, re-import it and normalise it back to 0 dBFS. What do you think it's going to sound like? OK, that's enough thinking. Here it is. Yes, again there's a lot of noise, but buried deep down in this noise is my original 220Hz sine wave signal. Listen again. What does this prove? Well, it proves that there's more dynamic range in properly dithered 16-bit digital audio than the space between 0 dBFS and minus 96. And it proves that in 16-bit digital audio, you need dither. Let me just play that distortion again. And the dither tone. Of course, you'll now be asking what about 24-bit? Well, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. See you soon. See you soon.